Hello and a very good evening from Cluj Naposa here in Romania. Now tonight I'm going to be heading down to the capital Bucharest with CFR Calatori aboard one of their sleeper services, checking out their um, what their solo cabin has to offer. So I'll be alone in the cabin tonight, um, not having to share it with strangers or anything. Um, hoping to get a good night's sleep and arrive nice and refreshed in the capital tomorrow. Should be a nice little ride. Um, yeah, just going to make the short walk up to the station now and let's head to Bucharest. But before we get the video started, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Friday. Cluj Napoca station is located about a 25 minute walk from the city centre. If walking isn't really your thing, trams and buses frequently serve the route between the city centre and the station. Before we take a look at what Gara Cluj Napoca has to offer, I thought we'd just take a look at the impressive old steam engine that's on display outside the station. Unfortunately, the information I could find on it is somewhat limited, so if you happen to know anything about its history, be sure to leave a comment. Now I'm loving the old quaint facade. Cluj Napoca station opened in September 1870, meaning it dates all the way back to when the city was still part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. The main entrance brings you into the station's concourse. Here you'll find a couple of standalone ticket machines, selling tickets for all CFR trains. Large arrivals and departure boards can be found opposite the entrance, As well as self-service ticket machines, you can also find staff ticket counters to my right. Alternatively, you can do as I did and purchase your tickets online. Moving along from the concourse, you'll find a small waiting area. While pretty basic, it still fulfills its intended function and is nice enough. The station doesn't really have a lot to offer in the way of shops and eateries. That said, a fairly decent Carrefour Express can be found just two minutes down the road. However, just a quick word of warning, you are definitely going to want to stock up on food and drink ahead of your journey as, despite the ride to Bucharest taking the better part of 12 hours, no on-board catering is available. The platforms can be accessed by passing through the doors at the back of the concourse. To move between platforms, an underground subway is provided. Our train, the 1915 to Bucharesti Nord, will be departing from platform 5 this evening. Our train is one of two nightly sleeper trains between Cluj and Bucharest. The train we're catching takes just over 11 hours, while a later departure takes a more direct route, with its travel time being just under 10 hours. With all the old DB Regio stock kicking about, you'd be forgiven for thinking we're in Germany at the moment. A lot of CFR's stock seems to be made up of hand-me-downs from other countries. Our train arrives fresh from the depot around half an hour prior to departure. Haulage is initially provided in the form of this CFR Class 41 electric locomotive. These first entered service in 1965, with most being built by Electro Putier between 1967 and 1991. The type is capable of 160 km an hour or 99 miles an hour. Trailing the locomotive, you'll find a rake of various different coaches. The coaches seen here make up just one portion of the train. More will be added in Dej Kalatori, about an hour after departing Cluj. Our sleeping car is at the very front of the train this evening in the form of this old coach built by Hansa. This type of coach was built between 1957 and 1973 and is authorised for speeds of up to 140 km an hour or 87 miles per hour. 
This sleeping car is another example of old rolling stock that has been acquired from Deutsche Bahn. Immediately upon boarding, we can clearly see signs of just how old this carriage is. I'm loving the abundance of wood used in the interior. It's just something from another era. You're going to glue from Bucharest. Okay, right. 41 in the middle. Okay, thank you very much. After checking in with the very friendly sleeping car host, it's time to head to our room for the night. I have been allocated berth 41, although I have solo occupancy of the entire cabin. The sound of the train's horn signifies that we'll soon be departing, so before we do, let's just take a quick look at our route for today. Our journey through the night will initially see us travelling north, before heading east and finally south, via Brasov and towards Bucharest. Scheduled travel time tonight is 11 hours and 14 minutes, and our top speed will be 140 kilometres an hour. And we pull out of Cluj, bang on time, at quarter past seven. Now, regular viewers of the channel will know, I'm quite the fan of a nice sunset, and the views as we left Romania's fourth largest city certainly didn't fail to impress. What a beautiful way to end a nice early autumnal day. Now that we've left Cluj behind, it's about time that we took a closer look at what the rooms have to offer. The cabins are a bit like Fort Knox, with not one but three locks provided on the door. However, note that the doors cannot be locked from the outside. Next to the door you'll find a switch for the main light. There are plenty of options should you want to hang up some of your clothes, thanks to the number of coat hooks and hangers provided. Should you be travelling in a larger group, it's possible to join up two cabins with an interconnecting door. Now of course, the most important feature on any sleeper train is the bed. And this one was alright actually, the duvet was nice and thick, although I did find the pillow was a tad on the thin side. As for the mattress, the best way I can describe it is a bit like an old gym mat. It was fairly comfortable without being the best in the world. I appreciate that the camera hasn't done the best job of picking this up, but above the bed you'll find controls for the main light as well as a little night light. Each bed also comes equipped with a personal reading light. Regardless of whether or not you're travelling alone, you'll find that the middle berth is also made up. This comes equipped with all the same features as the lower berth. Each bed also has access to a little drinks table, as well as some sort of netted shelf, which I guess could be used for storing smaller items such as mobile phones. These cabins are actually designed to accommodate up to three people, but if you're travelling in a group of two or less, you'll find that the upper berth is folded away. You'll also find plenty of space for storing your luggage, with racks located above the door and window. Given their age, it's hardly surprising that these coaches aren't air-conditioned. As a result, ventilation is provided in the form of opening the window.
When it's time to go to sleep, the window can be covered with this very effective blackout blind, although you'll have to excuse the fact I'm making an absolute hash of demonstrating this. To the right of the window you'll find a little wash basin. Both hot and cold water are provided and, while it did take a moment or two to get going, I found the water pressure to be fine. It even features a mixer tap which is something we in the UK are yet to fully discover. Above the sink you'll find a plug socket which is intended to be used for electric razors but it worked just fine to charge my phone. Moving further up you'll find a little vanity mirror complete with a light. Opposite the beds you'll find a ladder which could be used for accessing the upper berths. Under the sink you'll find a little litter bin. Lastly, I almost forgot that behind the mirror you'll find some space for storing toiletries, although be warned I found this little cupboard to be quite grubby. You'll find toilets located at the end of the coach. I said earlier that these coaches were built between the late 50s and early 70s, and I think that's the last time anyone actually bothered to clean the toilets. They were revolting. There's also what was once a shower, but the lack of any shower head has essentially rendered it unusable for anyone over 4 foot tall. And unfortunately that is as far as our wonder can go as they lock off the sleeping car from the rest of the train for security purposes. But if you're curious to know what to expect from CFR's seated coaches, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications as I have plenty more Romanian content to come. About an hour after departing Cluj, we arrive in Dej Calatori, which is where we'll join up with coaches from Baia Mare, as well as have a change of locomotive. In total, we're stopped here for around half an hour before continuing on towards Bucharest. With there now being very little to see out of the window, I decide to turn in for the night shortly after we depart Dej Caladori. I wake up about an hour prior to us arriving into Bucharest at about 5.30am just as we're pulling into our final intermediate stop of Ploiesh de Vest. In seemingly no time at all, we find ourselves passing Henry Kowanda International Airport and fast approaching the bright lights of Bucharest. Overall, I found my first CFR sleeper experience to be pretty decent. The bed was fairly comfortable and I really enjoyed the novelty of getting to experience a beautiful old sleeping car such as this. It was certainly a world away from the sleeper experiences I've had in the UK and other Western European countries. While I appreciate that Romania's railways aren't exactly blessed with an abundance of funding, it would be nice if someone could run a cloth around the bathrooms once in a while and, for a journey as long as this, there really should be some form of catering on offer, even if this does come at an extra charge. Right, time to talk money. I paid 269 lu and 5 bani for solo occupancy of this sleeper cabin. That's about £45.95, $63.35 or €54.35. 
When you consider that I had the place to myself, I think that's exceptional value for money, don't you? Considering just how cheap the tickets are, I think this is a pretty good experience and certainly one I'd recommend. But what did you make of it all? Have you got experience of travelling on Romania's railway network? Be sure to let me know in the comments. Thank you. After a journey of 549 kilometers or 341 miles, welcome to Gara Bucharesti Nord, where we've arrived just under 10 minutes early at about 6:20 a.m. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Friday. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you next Friday.